everyone i hope you guys are having a wonderful day i need to bring a message to you guys today for one to be encouraged and also um to just understand what i've seen in scripture so far what i've learned which is really really awesome um it's amazing how scripture interprets itself you know you know a lot of times i find out that um a lot of those that accuse you know grace teachers of you know not promoting certain doctrine or promoting certain doctrine, should I say, you know, um, what they've done is they will take one verse out of a passage. I mean, completely butcher that because they do not understand the context has been spoken of. I am going to address, I'm going to address one today, but before I do that, let's give you the gospel and then we're going to go forward. Okay. And I pray that, you know, the Holy Spirit will help me um, you know, just explain this much better so people can be more uh, clear on this message, you know, and also not be afraid when you hear certain things, all right? Anyway, the gospel is found in First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, and that is that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead for our justification, okay? Jesus always existed. He is a self-existing God. The second person of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He left heaven, was born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, and shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all our sins, past, present, and future. And what God calls us to do is to believe on the Son, believe in his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his finished redemptive work on the cross. That is key. Many say that they believe in Jesus they believe in his death, burial, resurrection. Yeah, we say by grace through faith. However, they then say, but that doesn't save everyone because you could still lose your salvation. I mean, I mean, it's like they completely destroys their own claim of salvation. You know, right there on the spot. Jesus gives us eternal life. Okay, everyone who has believed in his son have eternal life, period. Okay. If you have trusted in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. God does not play games, okay? When he said he would do something, he'd do it. And whenever he makes a promise, he keeps his promise, okay? God does not need us to fulfill his promise. He fulfills his promise all by himself, okay? So salvation is strictly God's, not ours, okay? He is the one that gives us salvation. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 tells us, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. You don't get no better than that. But anyway, um, you hear people always say, well, you know, Jesus, you know, uh, well, yeah, he paid for your sins, but but you got to do your part too. You know, uh, uh, so, 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 but he didn't pay for all of them because you just can't keep doing whatever you want. That's the first thing they thought. I say, who wants to keep sinning? You know, nobody does. Who's saved? They don't say, oh, yeah, now I'm saved. Yeah, let me just go go crazy. No, nobody's doing that. I mean, this, this is so stupid that this argument keep coming up. You know, you guys can keep doing whatever, whatever you want. Who, who's doing that? Who's you guys? It's like these people just never give up, you know? Like, when is enough enough? But apparently not. Anyway. We keep reading, okay? Let's go to Hebrews 1, and I'm going to read 1 through 3, okay? And then we're going to go to Hebrews 10, 12. And then I'm going to go to 1 John, which is exactly what I'm, my main point. I just need you to grasp something, and probably it's the Second Corinthians 15, 1. But anyway, let's go. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, had in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, again, being made so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance, obtain a more excellent name than they. First of all, key word here, he purged our sins. Anyone who has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, all your sins are forgiven, 
encouraged. Now let's go to Hebrews 10, 12, okay? But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, you hear that? Jesus paid the sacrifice once and for all. Once and for all. I, I need you to I need it to stick with you people. Once and for all. That means he is not gonna keep paying for your sins over and over and over. Either he paid for all of it on that cross or he did not. And the Bible tells us that he paid for all our sins once and for all. But let's read. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. So again, you cannot miss this. Now, one bit, okay? So we have this background right now, okay? That Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world, all of it, okay? That means if you are now forgiven, by God's own promise, you are made righteous. Why do I say that? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.21. And then I'm going to jump to my main point. I just want to kind of lay it down for you guys, you know, because, you know, sadly, we, you know, many people just cherry pick verses, man. Now, for he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Hear that? Jesus became sin for us, and he purged all those sins on our cross, okay? And because of that, anyone who have believed in his finished redemptive work will receive forgiveness of sins. That means all your sins are purged forever, once and for all, okay? means you will never be held in contempt to answer for any sins ever again, okay? That is just that, that he paid for all of it, you know? Doesn't matter, 10 years from now, all your sins are still paid for if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, some people, oh, they cannot handle that truth because, you know, it burns inside of them because their, their righteousness is just, is, just, it, is just too powerful. How can God allow certain people, you know, oh, you know, because, you know what, they always jump to conclusion to make comparison using themselves with others, against others. So they elevate themselves, say, well, I don't do this, I don't do this, so therefore, if this person did this, then they definitely is not saved. There's no way. There's no way, because God will take away the salvation. Um, but anyway, so we understand that you are made righteous the moment you believe. It's not because you are righteous on your own. It is the righteousness of God himself, okay? Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, with that understood, as Christians, you are made righteous, correct? If you agree with this, check, check, check. If you don't agree, go back and read it again until it sticks, okay? With that being said, let's go. First John is one of the verses that you hear people when it goes to First John um, 1, 9. They say, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. They always quote that to say, see, you have to confess it because if not, God, you know, will not forgive you. Well, I'm here to tell you guys something. Mm -hmm. The book of 1 John was not written for born-again believers. It was actually written for unbelievers. And I believe it was addressing the Jewish people. Um, it was, this is pretty much an invitation to fellowship and to believe the gospel, okay? But let's read it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause in a moment. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, the gospel, which we have seen with our eyes, Jesus, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. Okay? Jesus, they were with Jesus. John is saying we're with Jesus. Okay? He's not talking to brethren. He's making a point here. Okay? In this letter that he's writing. For the life was manifested and we have seen it. Again, he is trying to make a point here and also to take a stand, okay? And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Telling you about the person of Jesus, okay? Peep this. 
that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. Well, I'm sorry. If you're already a born-again believer, you, you know, you can't preach the gospel to a born-again believer. If they're already saved, then they are saved. John, again, here is not addressing the believers. Okay? Let's keep reading. That you have seen, we declare, we declare unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. You hear that? Ye also may have fellowship with us. So he's inviting these people to believe the gospel so they can partake in fellowship. Okay? And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Again, you're not telling this to born-again believers. You are telling this to unbelievers. To draw them in, to let them know, hey, this is who we our fellowship really is with. Okay? Let's keep reading. Context is everything, people. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Okay? That's an encouragement, okay, to these unbelievers. You know, to let them know, hey. Because remember, a lot of them, they say, well, you know, they keep the law and they serve God. But, you know, to them, they do it perfectly right, you know. I mean, even today. There's some Jewish people that will tell you that they keep their whole law. I'm like, no, no, nobody does. Stop lying to yourself, you know. This is exactly what John is talking about here, you know. Um, pretty much don't count on your own self-righteousness because you're going to fail miserably. And you're going to see. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So first, let's establish something. Every born-again believer has the light of God in them. means you have light in you. You are not of darkness. You have light. Even Paul wrote that in, in um, you see that in 2 Thessalonians, you know, chapter 2, okay? Well, no, is it 2 Thessalonians? I think it's 2 Thessalonians. Yeah, yeah, okay? So we know that we are not in darkness. We are ch children of the light, okay? Because you're born again. Because Jesus is the light of the world and his light abides in us, Okay? check mark so we know he's making a stance here taking a position now he says if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth again this is the part where they say see you can't keep dancing and say that no that's not what he's talking he's not talking about anything here apart from helping you understand salvation okay because these people are not believers so he says if you say that you have fellowship with him, with God, and walk in darkness, well, you still walk in darkness because having fellowship with God, the only way you can do that is through Christ Jesus. But since you don't have Jesus Christ, you're still walking in darkness. Okay? That's his point. You see, you lie and you're not telling the truth. Okay? Because if he's, because even Jesus said himself, okay, when he was, uh, um, I believe it was in John, when he was saying, you know, that if you do not have, no, he said, he said, um, how did he put it? I'm paraphrasing here, okay? Jesus said something to this extent. I can't remember exactly which verse where he was saying that if you deny the son, you deny the father, I mean, if you don't have the son, you do not have the father either, okay? So for all those people who walk around saying that they believe in God, but they don't believe in his son, then I'm sorry, you don't believe in God either. You are pretty much deceived. And that's the same, you know, uh, uh, um, verbiage here, okay? Now it says, But if we walk in the light, who's the light? Jesus Christ. As he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Remember, he is trying to invite them to fellowship in the beginning of this passage, right? And now he's telling them how, Okay? He said, we will have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Hear that? So in order for you to be in the light, your sins must be purged, must be forgiven. Okay? So if your sins are not forgiven and the only one that can forgive you is Jesus Christ himself. Okay? He is one that will forgive your sins because you're placed your trust in him. If you reject Christ, then your sins are still with you. Simple as that, okay? So, now he says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And that's the funny thing because uh, many of them say, we don't have any sins because we have done the animal, you know, blood atonement, you know, you know, bull, you know, sacrificing bulls and goats. And 
if Jesus was the final sacrifice, the once and for all atonement, then your blood, uh, your bulls and goats that you're sacrificing means nothing. You still have your sins with you, okay? Just like in today's uh, people, you go into a Catholic priest and he tells you, say, 10 helmets and 11 our fathers and your sins are, uh, are not observed. That is ridiculous. He has no power to forgive sins and he and he is wrecking up more sins on himself anyway and you still am forgiven, okay? Period. The only way your sins are forgiven is by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ alone and it is forgiven once and for all, okay? Now, look what he says next. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, if you are a born-again believer, you are made righteous. So he, again, second point, he's not talking to believers here. He's talking to unbelievers. And when he says, if we confess our sins, he's not saying to list your sin. That means you are admitting that you're a sinner, okay, in need of the Savior. And when you admit that God's x-ray of who you are is correct, that God is right, you were wrong, okay, that means God says you are a sinner and you must agree with God, okay? When you agree with God that you are a sinner and you need saving, you need forgiveness of those sins, you come to Jesus for that, okay? If we confess our sins, yes, he is faithful. He said he is faithful, absolutely, to forgive you. That means you must admit that you have a problem, okay? And that's what he's telling them, you know, because you can't walk around saying, I don't have any sin at all. Because you know what? My sins were forgiven already because we did a blood atonement sacrifice over here. That's just ridiculous. Only Jesus can forgive sins. And that's what he's trying to, you know, make a point here. Okay? He said, but if you confess it, I agree with God that you were a sinner after all. Okay? Your sins are not forgiven. Okay? Then he is faithful and just to forgive you. That means you got to believe the gospel. And he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Because guess what? They are still unrighteous. Until you have believed the gospel, you are an unrighteous person. According to God. Okay? Now he says, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. So he says, so everybody sins. And that's his point here. He says, so don't walk around saying that, you know, we don't sin either. You know, you have people who deny saying that, Sin is not sin, or this is not sin, or that's not sin. That is the most absurd things ever. If God said that something is sin, that means it is sin, period. Okay? You got people saying abortion is a choice. It's not a sin. That is murder. You are murdering the innocent. Okay? You're murdering, you're killing children who cannot defend themselves. The LGBT community. You got people standing up saying, that is not a sin. Are you kidding me? If God called it a sin, it is a sin. Okay? Just like any other sin listed in the Bible. Okay? So, we need to stop coming up to make excuses just to avoid, you know, uh, uh, um, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, arguments. No. No, 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 no. It's okay. If someone wants to argue, let them argue. You just present scripture and let them know this is what scripture actually is saying. You don't get it, you know, because any scripture that contradicts eternal security is not talking about eternal security. I'm just going to say that again. If any scripture you read contradicts eternal security, it is not talking about eternal security because God does not do a double talk. He doesn't say one thing over here. Yeah, I give you eternal life. And then on the other side, he said, I'm going to take it away. It makes absolutely no sense because if that's the case, then God cannot be trusted, okay? And God can be trusted because he doesn't double talk. He's faithful and true. So he doesn't lie. So therefore, anyone else that's making this stuff up is a liar. Again, I hope you, this really helps a lot of people because this first John is not talking about believers. This is unbelievers, okay, trying to convince them to partake in the fellowship with Christ Jesus and God the Father, okay? With the fellow brethren. But to do so, to be part of the fellowship, you have to be born again. You cannot be, you know, an unbeliever in fellowship. Because again, the whole thing is, what did he say in Scripture? To be unequally yoked. 
with unbelievers, right? It cannot be equally yoked with unbelievers, you know, because you guys are not going to agree, you know, because if they deny that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you say that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you guys can fellowship because there's no foundation there. You see, the gospel is the plumb line. This is why it's so important to understand the gospel. Because without the gospel, I could speak everything until I turn blue. If you do not accept the gospel, you're still going to hell. Simple as that. Okay? Every person who have rejected Christ will enter hellfire and second death, lake of fire after the great white throne judgment. That is written and is done for. My last point is you have people that will bring up uh, uh, Revelation. I can't remember exactly because I, you know, I don't feel like you know going to it right now. But I'm going to tell you where Jesus was talking about how he will blot your name out from the book of life. And they say, see, if Jesus is saying, I will blot your name out from the book of life, then therefore you can lose your salvation. That is not what he was talking about. You know. If you read, he says, there is, he said, and the books were open, not one book, books. There are two books. There is the Lamb's Book of Life, which any name that enters that particular book does not come off. It is a permanent engraved name. It doesn't come off. And then there's the Book of Life. For everyone that is born, there's a Book of Life. Your name appears there. Okay? The moment you were born, your, your name appears there. So when Jesus said he will blot your name out of the book of life, that means you die. Physical death. He's not talking about spiritually because then he will contradict himself by saying, I give you eternal life. Okay? So he's talking about removing you from the earth physically. That is exactly what that passage is talking about. Again, any passage that sounds like it is in contradiction to eternal security is not talking about eternal security okay period because eternal security is exactly that eternal there is no going around that okay you could you could you could argue to turn blue it still will be eternal security whether you like it or not okay it is not up to us it is up to god and he established that simple as that because of his grace and mercy not because we deserve it okay again let Ephesians 2, 8, 9 be your MO. Read it over and over slowly until you grasp it. When you have understood Ephesians 2, 8, 9, then read John 3, 16 over and over and over and over and over until it clicks. If it doesn't click, keep reading it until it clicks. Because I'm sorry, the whole point that we keep having these discussions is, is just getting annoying because sadly, many people have fallen into this trap. All it is is the enemy working over time to keep your mind away from Christ and onto yourself. Like you have, you know, some kind of power to save yourself. Either Jesus paid it all or he didn't. And I truly beg to differ because the Bible, as the Bible has told us, he paid it all once and for all. Anyway, I hope you guys were blessed today. You guys have a wonderful day. Love you all and thank you for watching and subscribing. Peace. And stay safe all day, y'all. Later.